preference. Do you need the restoration scriptures? I don't know why you'd be using any other Bible. The, every other Bible is full of errors that they refuse to correct. And unlike that, the, the restoration scriptures, we have added things from the Dead Sea Scrolls from other reputable sources. Okay, for instance, in Isaiah chapter 9, verses, I showed this to my daughter the other day, when it talks about the Messiah being born, verses 1 through 6, it says, you have not increased the joy. Go ahead and look at any translation. It talks about the birth of Mashiach, and then it says, you have, meaning the coming of the Messiah, will not increase the joy in Israel. But in the Restoration Scriptures, the word not is crossed out. Obviously, the coming of the Mashiach will increase the joy in Israel. Where did that word not come from? It came from a mistranslation. How come in Matthew 5, in most Bibles, it talks about, Yeshua says, he that marries, he that, he, he that um, divorces or marries a divorced man or a divorced woman commits adultery. When the Torah says, go ahead and divorce. So the Torah says, go ahead and divorce. The so-called uh, Greek New Testament says, if you divorce or marry a divorcee, You've committed adultery. So now we have the Brit Hadashah contradicting the Torah. Can't be. The Brit Hadashah cannot contradict the Torah. So we know in the original Aramaic, Yeshua said, quote, He that marries her or him that is undivorced, wow, what a difference, commits adultery. Meaning, if I just move on from husband to husband and wife to wife, and I don't give with dignity and pro propriety, and with uh, decency put away legally according to Torah, my old wife or my old husband, so that I can move on to a new relationship and I just dump her and move from one and, and have five wives or five husbands simultaneously, I'm guilty of adultery. Okay. Does, that, does that make a difference? The, the Aramaic word is shavachta. He that marries a shavachta or a undivorced woman, meaning she hasn't had her legal divorce come through, or he hasn't had his legal divorce come through, and you marry an undivorced person, you're committing adultery because you're coming right into their marriage. That man or woman is not yet divorced. Yes, you need the restoration scriptures. I'm not trying to sell by You need the restoration, because Matthew 5 and the restoration scriptures perfectly coincides with the teachings of the Torah in Matthew 24. Now Yeshua said, yes, it's true. The Torah, Moshe, the Torah, allows for you to divorce your wife, your husband. Isn't that what Yeshua said? But in the beginning, in Gan Eden, with Adam and Chava, in Adam and Eve, in the beginning it was not so. But because you have a sin benighted heart, Moshe or the Torah allowed for you to put away your wife. So since Yahweh allowed it in the, in the Torah, I'm not here to contradict my father. Just be careful that when you do to uh, begin another relationship. You don't treat the former spouse like a piece of trash. You put her or him away with dignity and honor and respect as the mother or the father of your children. Amen. Hallelujah. Be careful what you're being taught Amen. and who's teaching. Amen. Okay. Back to verse 22. So I believe this could be a two-house reference. But for the elect, that could be Ephraim, Beth Ephraim, the ten tribes, or the latter-day believing Gentiles, mostly. Most of the believing non-Jews today are the ten tribes of Israel. If you're not Jewish, and you're born again, and you love the Torah, and you follow the whole Bible, not just the part that ends, it, that begins in Matthew, then you are from the ten tribes of Israel. Welcome home. We've been waiting for it. What happened to the ten tribes? They're lost. Of course they're lost. You are the ten tribes of Israel that Yeshua came to regather. And you don't even know that you are descended physically, not spiritually, physically descended from the ten tribes of Israel. So of course, the ten tribes of Israel are lost because you don't even know yourself that you are physically, Yeshua said, I've only come to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Yeshua said to the Pharisees in Yohanan chapter, chapter 10, he says, guys, don't be pride, proudful and arrogant. He says, there's another foe that I have. I must bring them in. And then these two folds will become one, and there will be one shepherd over both folds. Doesn't mean I'm going to die for the sins of, it, of, of man, and I'm going to get some Gentiles and build a church. He didn't say that. He says, listen, Jewish people, don't be arrogant and proud, because there's another flock of Israel out there now that's not Jewish. I must bring them in. Was he, did he say that when he was dead or alive? He said that when he was alive. He said, I have another part of Israel that's not here. Jewish Israel, you're here in front of me. Many of you are going to condemn me. Many of you are going to reject me. There's another part of Israel out there 
I must bring them in. When I, I'm not asking your permission. I've been sent by the Father to bring them in. So if you're here today and you love Yeshua, you love the Shabbat, you love the Word of Yahweh, you are come directly. Hear me good. You have come directly from the ten tribes of Israel. Hallelujah. Welcome home. You're our brother. We've been waiting for you. They're not lost anymore. When you realize who you are, you're not lost anymore. Hallelujah. Baruch Hashem. Amen. Yahweh. Hallelujah. And so when the Jewish people say to you, that's crazy, man. How can you be one of the ten tribes of Israel? How can you, how do you know you're an Israelite? And then you go, Hama, 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 and you pull Ralph Crampton or a honeymoon. Hama, 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 Hama. Was your mother Jewish? No. Was your father Jewish? No. Shut up. And we get all intimidated. The truth of the matter is, there's not a Jewish person alive who knows they're Jewish because all the certificates and the records were burned in the Second Temple in 70 CE when uh, Vespasian and then later um, Hadrian destroyed the Betamidash and all the birth records and all the temple records were destroyed. So the Jewish person who claims to, to know that he's Jewish, his mother told him he was Jewish, his grandmother told him he was Jewish, his great grandmother told him he was Jewish. He said, That's nice, I believe you, but how do you know eight generations ago? You did not have a Catholic, a, a Irish father, and a, and, a, and, a, and a Greek mother, and the two of them committed adultery. But in order to hide and cover their sins, they both converted to Judaism. And now, eight generations later, you present yourself as a Jew, and yet eight generations ago, we can trace your ancestry to an Irish father and a Greek mother. So, put the same burden of proof on them. If they don't believe you are part of Israel, they say, okay, well, you know something. You're vexing. What does the word of God always say? Judah vexes Ephraim, and Ephraim is jealous of Judah. Why? Because Ephraim is being vexed by Judah in Isaiah chapter 11. Why? Because they're presented with a situation that they cannot change. You're not Jewish, and there's nothing you can do to change that. Okay? So, so, so you can't prove that you're an Ephraimite, but guess what? Neither can they prove they're Jewish. So we know we are Israel because we walk by faith and not by sight. The Bible tells us there are two houses. Right here in Matthew 24, Yeshua is teaching the two houses, if we have ears to hear and if we have eyes to see. Look here. No flesh, no, no believing flesh would survive, but for the elect sake, that's Ephraim, and for the sake of the chosen, that's Jewish Israel, this redeemed remnant, blood-washed remnant, faith in Yeshua, Jewish remnant, those days, the days of the Islamic end time assault on Yehuda and Yerushalayim, shall be short. <laughs> Yahweh will deliver Israel from the end time beast and the great tribulation that the end time beast will cause. Verse 23. Matthew 24, 23. Then if any man says to you, here is Moshiach, or the anointed one, there is the Moshiach, the anointed one, what? Follow them. Is that what it says? Is that what it says? Don't believe it. What is he talking about? What is Yeshua talking about? The actual Aramaic doesn't say the Moshiach. If they say to you, there is an anointed one. There is an anointed one. Don't go. There is an anointed one. Don't go. Because if you do not proclaim the name of Yahweh, believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of Yeshua, and if you're not washed in the blood of the Lamb, you cannot be elected or chosen. You belong to neither redeemed, rent, neither house that's redeemed, by the blood of Yeshua. Does any of this make sense? Yes. So they say to you, oh, he's an anointed one. Ooh, he is the final revelation. He is the final prophet. He is the final mouthpiece for God. Believe it not. <laughs> Verse 24. There shall arise false Mishichim, Messiahs, anointed ones, false Nevi'im, who will show great signs and wonders in so much, in so much that it became possible, they will deceive the very elect and the chosen. See that? Okay? That's a two-house reference. If it were possible, this spirit that claims that there are other anointed ones more anointed than Yeshua. This is what I want you to get. The message of the last days, the Islamic message is that Isa was a prophet but he was not the son of Yahweh who died and rose from the dead for our sins. Rather, there are other anointed or other more anointed ones that were to come. Go ahead and get quiet. I'm just going to roll and roll and roll and work. <laughs> 